Hey guys, I'm Big Mike, and like always, I'd like to thank you for being here today. Today we have a webinar on neural networks in plain English, presented by Ron Laplie. And Ron has identified some of the bullet points as artificial intelligence, history and background, neural networks, the basics, some case examples, some common problems with neural networks, and some solutions to common problems with neural networks. Uh, Ron wants to demystify neural networks and explain them in plain English, including sharing easy to understand code examples. The webinar is being recorded and I'll post the recording on BMT sometime tomorrow on our YouTube channel. If you're watching the recording at a later date and you like it, please do us a favor and give us a thumbs up. It does help us out. Ron has said that uh, as you guys have questions, if they're relevant to what's being discussed at the time, you can go ahead and type them into the questions box and we'll try to get those answered as we go. Uh, otherwise, we'll have uh, some time at the very end of the presentation for just a general Q&A. All right, guys, with that said, let me turn things over to Ron, and we'll get started. Okay, Ron, I've made you the presenter again. You should have the option to share your screen. Thank you, Mike. Okay, it looks good. Okay. Thanks, Ron. Thank you, Mike. Um, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it's my honor to present you uh, this afternoon a presentation about neural networks. Um, we've had quite a bit of activity on the forums on the various subjects, so Mike invited me to do a webinar and share with you uh, some knowledge and some experience. As Mike explained, uh, today we have an agenda. I will give a brief introduction about myself. I will give some history about artificial intelligence. I will go through the basics of what is it uh, all about neural networks, and then we will dive in a concrete case, um, some context, why we came to the situation uh, wanting to use neural networks to, to, to fix a solution. And we will show uh, where that leads us and uh, make a conclusion and then a wrap up. So that's the agenda for today. Um, let me a little bit explain my profile. I have an education as a software engineer. Uh, very early as a student, I wrote my own charting software. That was in the days that uh, you should be happy if you ha had four or 16 colors on your screen. So that's really uh, uncomparable with uh, the spoiled situation we are in today with uh, Ninja Trader and other packages. I worked at a stockbroker in uh, IT software development, integration with stock exchanges, and today I work uh, in an IT environment for a global payment company. Let's talk a little bit about artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence, that's actually not re really, really something new. Uh, it came up in the 50s uh, when John McCarthy spoke about making uh, intelligent machines, but even a long time before uh, mankind already uh, thought about intelligent robots and artificial beings. But if today we are looking at, let's say, the, the group of what is under artificial intelligence, we see a number of uh, disciplines, uh, whether it's reasoning, whether it's representing knowledge, whether it's planning, learning, uh, natural language processing, natural speech, uh, whether it's perception, like machines who are able to sort uh, objects uh, based on their form, or whether it's manipulation, like intelligent robots in assembly uh, lines. Today, we're only going to talk about the subset, which are neural networks. Uh, we'll going to explain the basics. Uh, what is a neural network? Um, it's a subset, as we explained, of artificial intelligence. Um, a neural network, it consists of two things. It consists of software and it consists of data. Uh, we will see that in the example, uh, what is meant with that. And actually, the software and the data together will try to model something like the human brain and simulate human intelligence. I will put that later into a little bit more of context. Very important is that the neural network is able to learn based on data you are giving it to the network. Uh, this you can compare, it's like a totally opposite 
of something which is rule based where as a developer you will put every single rule and if it's not in the rule the program will not do it whereas a neural network will do things uh, which you didn't explicitly tell to do uh, because it learns based on the data that's a very important uh, observation let's talk a little bit about the human brain the human brain has a hundred billion of little units called neurons uh, and every neuron is interconnected with thousands of other neurons um, the neuron will uh, input uh, some signals through what is called in medical terms synapses uh, and that's connected with long branches called dendries we will see later when we dive into neural networks that you will find something very similar to uh, what is present in the human brain. What happens in the neuron uh, in our brain is that this, there are many, many, many inputs and under certain conditions the neuron it will fire something and that fire signal will potentially be input to other neurons um, and that's fired through the axon. When we talk about artificial uh, neurons we will we, see the little bit the same things. Um, we have inputs and we have outputs. Um, the inputs they have weight because not necessarily all the inputs are uh, having the same importance uh, so they will be weighted to come into an output. Um, there are some together which if we talk a little bit mat for some people might be long for other people that might be very clear. We will add the, we make the summation of the multiplication of the weight with the input and that's the, the output. What we will do, we will put uh, activation function because that's not necessarily just a, a linear uh, situation. In coding what does that mean? You have like uh, from 0 to n inputs and the activation is just the sum of those multiplications of the input with the weights. Uh, luckily, these things, uh, you if you play with neural networks, you're never going to do it yourself because there's a lot of software available that will do that for you. I'm just trying to explain that a little bit because sometimes people ask, yeah, that's fine, neural networks, but what's really under the hood? Uh, so that's to understand a little bit uh, what is under the hood. Here we show... Um, a neural net a neuron a little bit more complicated it's the same on the left you have the inputs which are multiplied by the weights they are sum some together they are all added so input 1 with weight 1 plus input 2 multiplied by weight 2 plus input 3 and so on and so on and then that output is going to what we call a activation function uh, there are different activation functions from which we can choose um, and if a threshold is uh, achieved, then the function uh, will actually uh, fire uh, the result. Here we see a number of activation examples you can choose from when you're building a neural network. It can be either linear, it can be sigmoidal or hyperbolic and so on. In order to use neural uh, neurons, uh, we're going to put them together in a network. They have to be linked together uh, and there are a number of possibilities to put them together. The most common and the one we're going to use in our example is a feed forward. Um, it comes from the fact that uh, each neuron output is feed into the next layer, which will be more clearer on the next slide. What we see here is that on the lower level you have like five input neurons which then are fed into four neurons in the hidden layer so every output of every input neuron goes to every input of the hidden layer and the same thing is true every output of every neuron from the hidden layer goes as input to the neurons in the output layer. We know from the previous explanation that those inputs they all have a weight uh, to come uh, to a summation and to a uh, activation function. This is actually a very important statement. Uh, when you're building a neural network 
and you have an outcome of a neural network, the neural network will say yes or no or this or that, but it will not give you a reason. It will just give it and it's sometimes difficult to know why it gives it. So if you need to know for some solving a problem why, the neural network is not a good fit. Uh, you would then go more into rules base where you can say because rule one, rule two, rule three they are okay, then do this. Uh, so a neural network is not uh, good if you need to know how. However, if you have a machine and a neural network is used for doing object recognition and you are, for example, sorting tomatoes, you don't have necessarily have to be able to say why the tomato is sorted well. If it, the machine is doing its job, then that's fine. If you go, somebody is in court and you're using neural networks, that would be a no-go because the judge will have to know why the neural network uh, decided that he's guilty. Another important fact about neural networks is that compared to uh, rule-based programming, uh, you will have a lot less code. Um, you can dramatically reduce the number of lines of code of a program using neural network. This is taking abstraction of the neural network itself, so the, the technology and the functions for making the neural network work. We make a fraction of that, we will use a library, but the actually lines you're using to doing your program, they can be a very limited number of lines and create a very uh, complex uh, resulting uh, system. It means also that a neural network, uh, it allows to learn patterns uh, without having to put every single rule by yourself in place. An important aspect uh, which you will see with neural networks is learning and training. Uh, actually, we will feed into a neural network once it is created, we will feed data. We will learn the network and when we have learned the data to the network, we will have to train it. Training is actually uh, a simplification of what we call finding the right weights for every neuron so that if we give new data to the neural network, it knows how to uh, recognize that data and make the right decision based on that data. So we have learning and we have training, but we'll see it in the code example. Um, luckily, to use neural networks, you don't have to be a, a university wizard and be able to program all those algorithms. You can use uh, either commercial or non-commercial libraries which are quite publicly available on the internet with a vast um, library of documentation, examples and a lot of study material. In this webinar I will be using the ANCOC library, um, but the mechanism explained uh, whether you use this library or another library, they stay in the same. To people who have been programming a little bit in Nino Trader, what does it technically mean? It means that you have a DLL with all the functions and the features of uh, neural networks included. You will add it to your project, you will create an object, you will put properties and you will call methods functions. Um, we will focus here more on using neural networks than really, really programming yourself, learning uh, algorithms and uh, the insight of neural networks. That's a lot of, of stuff which already exists uh, freely uh, on the market. To put a little bit context, uh, we will go through a concrete case. Um, the concrete case explains a good example when we can use uh, neural networks. Um, it is actually a trading strategy, a trading strategy that was at length discussed by many, many participants on the BMT forum. Um, and we will actually jump into the next slide where we see the trade strategy. I will explain it a little bit. Actually, um, without going into every single detail of the trade setup, uh, the example here shows uh, what we call lightning up. Lightning up means that you have, in the bottom line here, you have what is called a CCI indicator. You have a pattern which is A, B, C, D. If D 
crosses the line. If you the D is the opposite of the A and you have a lightning app, then we call this the trigger point. So there you would buy um, at the moment that the Unirenko candle goes above the step MA. This is the step MA. It's another indicator. So this was a trading strategy that some people came up with. Uh, a lot of people played with it. Uh, I played with it myself. Uh, and I even said, wow, this is a great strategy. Um, let me program it. So I did that. I created a Ninja Trader strategy to detect those patterns um, and create um, trading signals. Unfortunately, um, okay, the strategy it uh, detected the ABCD, but very quickly I came into a conclusion where as I when I followed it mechanically, meaning that just the rules, buy, sell, buy, sell, uh, I found that sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't work. So, and the next thing I did is okay, I need to add something to my strategy to make it work. Uh, I need to filter stuff which is there. Very, very quickly, people came up with many, many ideas. Um, this is a filter, this is a filter, whether it's trading hours, whether it's other conditions. Some of the discussion is on the BMT forums. It's uh, called the Thread Runs Alpha Trade Method ATM Bot. This is a strategy uh, that was developed bit by bit, step by step. Uh, but still, at some point in time, uh, there was a problem. In, because people came up with many, many ideas. We need to test it this way, we need to test it that way. Uh, due to the Unirenko bars, uh, you could change the strategy and then what we did, we replay the data because if you don't replay the data, Unirenko bars, they're not, they're not correct. Uh, so you, you can't use the built-in uh, strategy testing available in Ninja Trader. You just need to put your chart and run a replay tick of the tick data. Very quickly, what happened is that, okay, uh, let's uh, replay one year of an instrument, uh, even at 500 times the actual speed, that takes roughly 17 hours to do a test. So if you're building your strategy and you're adding features, filters, you want to try this, you want to try that, uh, you need a massive amount of time, a massive amount of time that nobody has very, very clearly. Uh, but if you think about the problem is that the input to the strategy uh, is actually the Unirenko bar, the averages, which are, I will go back to the slide here, actually the data that is created by the replay is the Unirenko bars, uh, the clouds which are actually four averages, uh, the CCI, the CCI average, and you can replay as many times as you want an instrument, those data is always the same because we do not change the value of the averages, we do not change the value of the CCI. What we are changing is the strategy that will interpret the form of the clouds, the form of the uh, lightning up and so on. So actually that replay was a huge waste of time. So I came up with the idea I need to make a simulator. Uh, a simulator which allows me to quickly change the decision logic but without um, having to go 17.5 hours to do a run of if the code change in, in, in the strategy was efficient. So what did I do? I created a strategy uh, that actually wrote all that data to a file on the file system uh, because once you've stored it, it's static and then I create a small program that actually reads that file and pumps it through my strategy file. So I, I made a mechanism to run that Ninja Trader strategy outside of Ninja. And uh, the result was uh, I could test that strategy 20,000 times faster, which was a really good achievement uh, because all the ideas that came on the forum, people saying try this, try that, uh, in, in, in a couple hours I could try uh, several uh, new ideas because testing the I, once it was programmed, testing it was 20,000 faster. So in two minutes I had a result of uh, otherwise it would take 17 hours to test it. So that was the next step in my quest uh, for finding uh, a uh, ATM 
strategy uh, which could compete with the, the traders. Um, so we got stuck a little bit in the mud. Rules, 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 rules and more rules. Um, we tried to various suggestions. People uh, gave ideas. Um, I also created in the simulator a way uh, you could uh, make it run and say, okay, I will change my stop from 7 to 70, uh, my target from 7 to 70, and, and try all permutations, 7, 8, 7, 9, uh, 8, 7, 8, 9, and so on and so on. Um, what came out of that is that I couldn't really program rules in my strategy that made that strategy efficient. So uh, some clear moment I thought, yeah, maybe I have to try neural networks. Uh, if I create all the trade patterns, the good and the bad, I know what was good, I know what was bad, I tell the neural network, okay, here you have X patterns, these are good ones, you have X patterns, these are bad ones, and I have the next pattern which didn't exist in, in, the, in the test, in the learning data, I give it to the neural network, would the neural network be able to say yes or no, I think it's a good one, or I think it's a bad one. So actually I wanted to use the neural network as a kind of a catch-all rather than implementing 100, 200 rules um, on, um, on the, the strategy. So actually you can also follow this on the BMT, there is a thread uh, where uh, I worked on the NCOG scoring uh, for neural network. Going into a more practical point in order to train the net training data. Uh, and what, what are actually the data elements we needing for a lightning up or a lightning down? Um, it's pretty simple. We need for the A, B, C, D pivot points, so A, B, C, D or four points in time uh, where you take a vertical line. Uh, I captured uh, those points uh, taking the price, the points of the, of the clouds, the, the position of the step MA, the CCI, the CCI EMA, and if you take uh, those eight elements, eh, being four averages and the other points, you have 32 points. Um, what we did, uh, we put it, here you can see the data, uh, actually this is a logging of a trade signal, uh, so you have a lightning up, it says OK, OK means yes this was a profitable one, we stepped in at uh, 97.95, this is crude oil, uh, it went up 10 ticks, uh, we made 10 ticks on the trade, it went up 20, uh, and it never went negative. Then the next uh, data elements are uh, CCI, CCI EMA, uh, then the averages themselves, uh, the, the, the little cloud, the big cloud, uh, step MA, the close and a time extent. So we run one year of data and we capture all those trade signals. Good ones, bad ones, good ones, bad ones, we put them in a file and that was actually the data we used to train Hey. hey, Ron, can I, yes. can I ask one quick question? Go, go back one slide. Sure. Uh, when, you're, when you have that many decimal points, does that influence the neural network? Is it important to like round those figures or not round them? I, I don't think that's important. Um, I actually never thought about that of rounding it, um, okay. but it should not have an impact. But yeah, that's, that's an idea that could be tested. I, I guess um, I, you know, you you know way more than than I do on this. But yeah, I read something yeah. at some point that told me or made me think that um, it would look for like an exact match, and you know, with ten decimals or whatever that is, um, it might influence. Okay, thanks, Ron. Um, but we will come back to that later. Um, let's let's park the, the the issue about exact match uh, because that's uh, uh, something we'll discuss later. So. The next step was uh, to design the neural network, yeah? and okay, that's quickly said, but uh, was a lot of discussion and try and error to design a, a network. First of all, the input layer, that's quite, quite an easy one. If you have a problem and you have 32 elements, uh, which are our 32 points of A, B, C, D, so 4 times 8, um, that's order measure points, uh, and then we had a hidden layer 
You have some literature that says, okay, uh, if you're doing a neural network um, and you go from 32 to 1, the middle layer could be half of it. So that, that's where I started, a stick in the ground is half of it. And the output layer, one neuron, that's, that's a simple one. Yeah? Actually, I wanted my neural network to say yes or no. Is it a good one or is it a bad one? Uh, so the, the one neuron, uh, that was the outcome. What I did, I used NCOH library, which is a freely available library. There are lots of other libraries. It's just I picked one. Uh, I found a lot of examples. I found a lot of material to learn about. Uh, so you have to start with something. The first thing I did, I created a little standalone program in Visual Studio, which actually could validate the concept. Uh, let's look a little bit, eh, because people will say, wow, neural network, that's not my cup of tea. That's complicated. Actually not. You see the headers. The headers is just uh, once you add a, a dynamic link library, a DLL to your project, you're using the classes which are uh, exported in that DLL. And actually what we are doing in this function, we're creating two objects. We're creating a network object. Uh, we're creating a train object. Uh, the next thing is we, we create a, a, new, uh, a new class. Uh, and then we are doing three things. We're adding the first layer, which is I use activation sigmoid uh, as an activation function um, and the data record is actually a array uh, with all the real, uh, the, all the double numbers. Eh? The double numbers which are actually, if I go back here, uh, I put this in an array, this is double, double, double and so on and so on. So in the first layer I put 32 uh, numbers which are the input and the 32 numbers they correspond to uh, the different values of different indicators. The second layer uh, which is 16 here you see neurons, neurons it's a, it's a variable uh, the reason for uh, doing that is that later in uh, the concept uh, I've been playing with okay what if I reduce uh, the number of middle layers I'll come back to that later so I made it variable to play with it and the output layer, which is just uh, one, we finalize the structure and we reset it. That's as simple as it is to create a neural network. You don't have to be a whisker to do that. Um, there are libraries. You take the library, a few statements, and up you go. You have a neural network. So the next thing we need to do is to actually yes. Sorry, Ron. So I I uh, I hope it's okay to ask questions. Let me know if you're going to cover it later. So sure, you, sure. you have a true false output, right? So Correct. can can you just quickly tell me why true false output would be preferred over even like just a single digit like a scale of negative one to positive one where I had a a double that would give me like a a score? Can you tell me the well, advantages or disadvantages? Well, actually, um, what we do, and you can see it in this, actually I learned the network with uh, a two-dimensional array of real numbers, which is double, and this array, ideal, this has a, a one or a zero. A one or a zero because in what I learned the network is it's a good trade or it's a bad trade. You could make it more complicated and saying, I'm I'm going to say this is a bad trade, it immediately goes bad. Uh, I will say it's a good trade because uh, it went all the way. And I will put an intermediate value of it was a so-so trade. It went up, but at the end it didn't work. Right. I didn't do that. I, I just took it works or it doesn't work. If it was positive, I said one. If it was negative, it was zero. But you could debate it, whether you can learn the network to be a little bit more, let's say, a nuance. You could put a nuance in it. Okay. okay? All right. Thanks. But my my goal was to actually, when you look at the strategy, you know, on a year time, it could, for example, generate 600 signals. If I could remove 500 of those signals, and I'm fine that some of the good signals are gone, but if the 100 I keep over, they're all good, that, that would be really like... Uh, the holy grail I would have found. Yeah, but uh, I can already tell you it didn't work like that. But that, that was my goal or that was what I was searching for. I was searching for like when you have a machine that is able to sort tomatoes and it will, uh, the red ones go left and the green ones go right. I wanted logic that was able to find 
the boot ATM settings uh, and, and say, okay, this one I pass, I pass, I pass, the other one I take. That was the ID. Um, the next thing, so this you could say this is the learning and this is the training. And in plain English explained, the training is actually vari variating the weights in such a way that uh, the network is able to recognize. Uh, when is a network trained fine? It is trained fine if I give new data, which is not the absolute decimal same type of setup, but something similar, and for some reason, the network will say it's a good one, it's a bad one. And uh, I did a lot of testing on that with, with train, for example, the network with six months of data, and then take the next six months of data, uh, and the trading signals for which we know, okay, there are, there's a good one, a bad one, but ask the network, what do you think? Yeah, and you could sometimes see that 60, 70 percent, uh, it, could, it could recognize it. An important point I need to explain also uh, is normalization. Normalization, what does it mean? Uh, if you look at a year of an instrument, the, like crude oil, it will go down from 100 to 70, uh, now we are 50. Um, you don't want to give to the network those variating prices uh, which are time dependent. Uh, you want to translate those prices between 0 and 1 or between minus 1 and plus 1, you can choose it. Uh, so we need to, I will show you in coding how we do that. However, on the bottom line, the CCI, we don't have to normalize it because the CCI, it is always between minus 200 and plus 200. So it's an indicator which by itself is kind of normalized. Whether the crude oil is trading $200 or $20, the CCI, it will stay between minus 200 and minus plus 200. So that data didn't need to be normalized. Uh, I'll show you how I did my normalization. Uh, here you can see a little bit code. So what did I do? I look for the maximum uh, between A, B, C, D and for the minimum. And then all those variables, which are price and the averages, I distract the minimum and I divide it by the difference between the maximum and the minimum. So actually, what does it mean that if we say A, B, C, D, A is here and D is there, this is 0 and this is 1. So I'm reducing the, I don't have a scale here, but this should be something like 79, uh, that 79 would become 1 and that point here would become 0. It means that if I have a trade signal at 79 and I have a month later it's like at 85, it again will look like between 0 and 1. So that already removes a little bit like uh, the idea of the 73.111173. Uh, right. We don't work with that value. So Ron, I want to make sure I understand. So if you plotted the normalized values, would it look like this? Would you have a plot that followed the same structure of this of these prices? Yes. Okay. Yes, but if you would uh, actually, if you make the, take the next trade setup, it would stay in the same range. It, 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 the price doesn't go up from uh, 100 to 20. Every trade signal is between one and zero. Okay. That's that's how I normalized it. Got it. Thank you. Okay. Then another important thing you need to know about a neural network that's generalization. Generalization, there are lots of books written on that. Um, you can a little bit compare it, although it's not exactly the same with curve fitting, uh, but generalization is actually when, when have you created a neural network that generalizes well? Uh, imagine you give all kind of data to the neural network. If you give another set of data which has nothing to do with it or it didn't learn, if the neural network is able to classify the data correctly, then you have a well-generalized uh, network. If the network, because like Mike explained, the, the 0 0.0073, it's not the exact number and it, it, it loses uh, its way, it's unable to recognize, at that moment you have most likely a network which is uh, over-specialized. It is only able to work with the data you learned it and you train, 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 train so precise that if you give other data, it doesn't, it doesn't know what to do with it. So that's um, generalization. Generalization, we can 
achieve that in two ways. We can achieve that by reducing the number of neurons in the hidden layer. And I did a lot of testing with that. All that testing is posted also on, on the forum. Um, and we saw that by um, reducing the number of neurons in the middle layer, uh, on the learning data, you will see that the network starts to be more less precise. And uh, you will achieve a good recognition on the test data. A second possibility, and this I haven't tested yet, uh, there is only so much you can test uh, in a day, is another way. Actually, what you see in this chart, imagine I have 200 trade setups. What I will do, I will split it in 2 times 100. I will learn and train my network with those first 200, and I see it goes down, goes down, goes down. And while I train the network, I will test it in the same time with the test set. So the other 100 which I didn't learn to the network, I will test it. And when I see that the error goes down, goes down on both sets, the moment the error starts to go up on the test set, it means that you are over specializing. So that's another way uh, and actually I should put a little bit of time uh, to see if with this type of thing uh, I can obtain uh, better results. But that's the second way of uh, achieving uh, a good generalizing uh, neural network. Then the big one million dollar question is, okay, I have created a network, I have learned my network, I have trained my network, now I want to use it. How do I use it? Well, that's pretty simple. Uh, you call the function where uh, we will give the data, which is this input data, which is an array of doubles, it's 32 numbers of the next trade setup, a trade setup that the neural network doesn't know. We give that data uh, and actually we say to uh, the network, please compute uh, based on the input data, comp compute the output data. And it will come out with a thumbs up or a thumbs down. It will be good or it will be bad. That's the idea of using the neural network. One thing I need to Say, be careful with your data. In a very early version, I made a mistake, and I will swap back very quickly to my slide. Actually, I created that uh, locking data, and I didn't, and I wasn't very, very, very careful. I trained my neural network; it had more neurons, and actually, what the neural network learned is yes, the profit we have made. And the neural network was able to recognize very well all the stuff I learned it, but actually the answer was in the learning. So if you learn the network, you must be sure that the answer is not in the data. In my case, I made a mistake, the answer was in the data. But I quickly found it out because as soon as you test with other data, you'll see that it's off track. But it took me some time uh, to figure out that actually I learned my I I trained my network with uh, data that had already the exact answer in it. Another issue I encountered, then I had my uh, prototype. I said, uh, hip, hip, hooray, I'm going to assemble it in LinearTrader. And then I uh, encountered into a small issue because Encoch is using .NET version 4 and LinearTrader doesn't support that, um, which is maybe not a bad thing uh, because after all, what I did, I created a TCPIP listener which listens on a socket and from the strategy I call out uh, to that board. Uh, very, very high level for people who are not into that detail. You could, it's not exactly the same, but you could like uh, compare it like there is a small web server waiting there for some question and it answers. That's the kind of mechanism. So I removed NCOG from the memory space from Ninja which is not a bad thing because you, you could bring down your whole Ninja trader uh, platform if you do something wrong in the neural network. Um, so I actually created the program separate, but the two, uh, they communicate over a TCP layer uh, with each other. And they're running in their own uh, address space. For people who are a little bit more technical, the NCOG library is very powerful because it's doing multi-threading. So if you have a powerful computer with uh, multiple cores, uh, it will completely use that power which is available. Uh, you can see that if you make it work, uh, you see that all the 
uh, course or working uh, simultaneously. What did I obtain with that? Big question. Uh, here is an example uh, of trading results on gold uh, without using neural networks. Uh, it was just the strategy. Uh, it was 433 ticks positive. We did a massive 900 amount of trades, 460 good and 460 bad. Uh, and here you can see my, my, my frustration from the beginning. Uh, I had a trading strategy. It worked. It didn't work. It worked. It didn't work. I wanted to find a joker card that removed all those bad trades. Um, then what we what I did is uh, I took the same sample of gold but not the same way to to actually the data is from approximately one August twenty thirteen until July twenty fourteen. So from August twenty thirteen to January twenty fourteen we did the same strategy without the network because uh, the network uh, was not yet learned, but that period was used to learn the network and from 1 January 2014 on, uh, the trades were passed to the neural network and some of the trades were uh, filtered out. So if we compare, we can see we have roughly the same, a little bit lower, it's 412 ticks rather than 433 ticks. Uh, we have 623 trades, uh, a little bit less, and 316 wins, um, 360 wins rather than 466, and 300 losers rather than 462. Um, at the bottom line, it's better uh, because we're doing 600 trades rather than 900 trades, and we're making like 20 ticks less, but still it's not like my gold mine which I was looking for. Uh, it's an improvement, but not well enough. Um, which brings me to the conclusion, eh? um, the use of neural network, it reduced the number of trades and in most cases improved, improved the results, uh, but it didn't just do what I wanted to do and if I think about it and I'm sure that Mike, uh, and he, he already repeated it in the past, eh, the window we were looking at, the ABCD, is just a very tiny window, it's the window and only that data is used, whereas what I try to do with this strategy is to compete with the discretionary trader uh, who will do better than that strategy, for sure. Uh, but he looks at the high of the day, the low of the day, the bigger picture, the, 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 the figure the chart is making, um, and that's not in here. Here we're really microscopically looking at that ABCD setting and uh, could, has the neural network helped me? Yes. Did it make it into a super winner algorithm? No, but definitely it helped to improve it. But probably all my effort with the neural network, I've used it in the wrong problem from the beginning. I should, should have used it in something more macro and most likely I would have had uh, better results. So if we look like this square box here, this is the window of the fingerprint all the data before and after, forget about it. The neural network had only access to that data. While the trader who is looking at his screen, he sees what the chart is doing and it's bouncing and, that's, and he says, yes, I go in. Yeah, so that's, that's a little bit the difference between the discretionary trader and, and my, my little experiment with uh, neural networks. I'm coming a little bit to the end of my story. Um, as a wrap-up, what can I conclude? Uh, for me, neural networks, they have become accessible to a broader development audience. You can have libraries, you, while you, okay, you can understand what it does, you don't have to develop all the single nifty learning algorithms and the optimization to make it uh, work in multi-threaded and parallel calculation. There's a lot of very, very, very good libraries out there and it's, they come with examples and it's easy to use those, net, those algorithms. I would say when doing such a thing, don't focus too much on small time windows or fingerprint data that doesn't contain the bigger picture. Um, actually, the neural network can only be as smart as what you're teaching it and in my case, probably I was teaching it a too microscopic uh, piece of data. Another point is uh, backtesting is good for validating the concept, but don't postpone too forward. 
live test because like I did when I did forward testing for example I saw that my data in, in the very beginning it was not good so definitely you need to do forward testing also. The back testing is good to validate the concept but once you have the concept please 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 do forward testing on sim and, and try it in, in, in future. Uh, don't dig uh, in the past too much. Uh, as it stands today, the work could be progressed. Uh, there's a lot of stuff which could be included, like uh, early termination and the learning algorithm could be tested. Uh, and I think definitely what is missing is the bigger picture data. Uh, and that brings me a little bit to the end of the story, Mike. Okay, thank you very much, Ron. So a couple of thoughts. Uh, first of all, anybody that has questions, go ahead and type them in and we'll see if Ron can answer them. Um, first thing, Ron, when you have a chance, can you post in the webinar thread, can you link to the existing thread that you were working on? Um, on the yes, there are, okay. there are three threads. There is the thread of the strategy, there is the thread of the simulator, and then the thread of the neural network. Um, three are important because the neural network it, each built on top of the other, so that's a little bit, that's also why in my presentation I give a little bit context to bring people to a point where you see, oh, this is the problem, and that's how Ron tried to solve his problem. Right. Okay, so I made a couple of notes myself um, while people are still typing their questions. So the first thing is, and, and you talked about all these really, but the first one was, why, why not include some sort of an indicator that would give um, some kind of relative, like how, like if you measured the distance that price was trading from the VWAP, or even if you just looked at like close to close, like is the is are we up you know one percent on the day, down one percent on the day, some something that would kind of uh, act as an anchor on where price was at any given moment. What was your thought on that? I think that would help, and I think that's even necessary. But uh, the starting all the starting point of the strategy was the rules of the ATM uh, trading strategy right. and those trading strategies did not mention like the distance from MWAP and all these things okay. although some some of the traders said yeah but people why are you taking this one and the other you don't take so most likely unconsciously people do it in their head right. but it was not in the rules but you have, you have a very valid point and I think uh, that's the way to go forward if you want to uh, optimize that trading strategy. Okay, so second thing I wrote down was trying to, to better understand the reason behind a true false or like a good trade versus bad trade um, output instead of a variable number even if it was like just you know uh, negative one to positive one with like a one digit scale or so, something that would just kind of measure how bad like was this a 200 tick loss or was it a two tick loss because there's a big difference right so what can you explain why you did the true false or what what you think would happen if you measured it differently it might have been more nuanced the neural network might come up with an, an answer more nuanced and uh, you you would have to do testing and and some work on it to to be able to say yes or or no um but actually in my head what i wanted to achieve and that didn't really work out like that is to create like a joker card filter without having to write like 50 rules uh, something that recognizes oh this is easy this is a bad one just void it void it and if the system could would have told me the 10 best trades out of 200 I would be happy right but it didn't work out like that and, and more research would have to be done to, to find the situation. Right. But I think the, tool, the tools are there, the mechanism is there, the rest is just playing and, and, and testing and you need more time just to test and play with it. Right. Okay. All right. And the last thing I wrote down, and you talked about this, but uh, it strikes me, this is my personal opinion, nothing to do with neural networks, but you're using only price. So you're, you're using the, if you're trading crude oil, you're using the price of crude oil as your only input. I mean, CCI is just another way of, it's the same data, it's the same, same input, yeah. right? So um, kind of an analogy I thought of was like if you're on a freeway, you know, a highway, and the car is going faster, then the car goes slower, then it goes faster, then it goes slower. This could be like saying that the, the price is going up or down. But the thing is, is that if you're only looking at the car, then you're not 
paying attention that the car is in traffic and it gets going slower and faster because there's cars in front of it or behind it. So I'm just, it, you know, you might look at things other than price, right? So like um, what other instruments are doing or some sort of breadth indicator or even like crude oil inventory maybe or, you know, what, whatever, some kind of outside. I, I don't trade crude anymore, so I'm not good with telling you what to look at, but some sort of outside influence other than price. I think if I would have to create a strategy from scratch, that's definitely what I would do. Uh, but here, the, st all, the whole starting point was taking the ATM, which some people were able to show, bang, 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 this right, work. Right. Uh, bring the ATM to a strategy, and then uh, all of a sudden, it's not bang, bang, bang. It's like 50-50. Uh, <laughs> and and in, being in that 50-50, I put the neural network. Uh, whereas what you're saying is more like, I have nothing, and I will create something <laughs> smart. Right. That's probably what I would, would do, like uh, what you say, to, to put the inventories, to put macro information, to put other stuff, to put uh, momentum. Uh, but that was not the starting point. Uh, but I think your point is, is much, much more valid right. to create from scratch. Yeah. Right. Okay, so Mark says, can you use something like RabbitMQ for the NCOG uh, to an trader interface? Uh, you could any communication you could use to interface. You could do DDE, but I'm not an expert in DDE. Uh, I know pretty well TCP/IP, so for me it was just obvious to create a TCP/IP listener and and right. post it uh, over the listener. Well, is is there a lot of latency doing that? Is it is it on the same physical host? Uh, no, 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 no. Okay, so like if you're back testing, I, I don't know how many times it's querying the the uh, the NCOG interface. But like I, I, the closest thing I've ever done is a long time ago. I did something inside a Ninja Trader that would query a MySQL database, and the latency mm -hmm. was terrible. It was not good for backtesting. Yeah. yeah. No, this is in memory. This is uh, fl flashing fast. Okay. Uh, and and actually, it only does it when the when the the trade is there, and it's it's like a fraction of a second uh, when the trade is signaled. To. Okay. All right, so Sean is asking, so what, what's the next step? Uh, you talked briefly, but what, do you have any firm intentions on what you're going to do next? I need time, 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 and for the moment I don't have time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. If I, if I would win uh, the lottery, I would put a lot of time in this. Right. Uh, for sure. Understood. Okay, Steve. Or maybe I should just uh, stop consultancy and, and, and do this, uh, but <laughs> the moment is I don't have, I don't have enough time. Right. Uh, Steven says, do you know if neural networks are used successfully in any existing trading strategies? And if so, do you know how anyone's using it? Are they using it as a prediction? Are they using it as a filter? So do you, are you aware of anything out there that's, that's publicly uh, available that's using this? Uh, I posted uh, a document from a student who made a kind of a thesis uh, that gives another look at neural networks, uh, which was successful in one share and not successful in another share. Uh, definitely neural networks there are used in production by, by some firms. Um, I'm not that sure into prediction. Uh, for me, neural network is more suitable for recognition recognition where otherwise you have like 10, 10 zillion rules uh, to define something. Right. Okay. Uh, Peter says... And I, I, I like to compare it with the tomato sorting machine eh, that recognizes the image of a not perfect equal tomato and it will sort it uh, the good and the bad ones. Eh? Right. Peter's asking if there's any other libraries other than NCOG that you'd like to recommend. I played uh, mainly with NCOG, but I've seen others, uh, but I can't recommend. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't look at detail in it, but there are definitely good libraries out there. Okay. Uh, Sean says, uh, I know you tried different numbers of nodes in the hidden layer, but did yes. you ever try yes. using two or more hidden layers? No. No. Okay. And also, Sean... And in, in, liter in literature, you will see that the need for two hidden layers, you already have to have a very, very complex problem. Otherwise, it's not justified. Okay. You, you're adding a, a degree of freedom to your network which will explode. Uh, so, um, but you can, eh? but it was not necessary. Right. Uh, Sean's also asking uh, how this compares in scope to support vector machines. I can't answer the question. Okay. So. 
Sean, there's a guy on BMT. His uh, alias is N J A M C. Uh, his name's Greg. He's done a lot of threads on uh, on SVMs and some other stuff. He might know. And I, d I just thought of something that just kind of crossed my mind. So a few years ago, I briefly looked at Wave 59. It's a platform that um, it, I don't think it spells out if it's using neural networks or if it's using SVMs or, or what it's doing. But if I remember correctly, this is quite some time ago, but if I remember correctly, it didn't use a training set per se. I mean, it, it would use like a really, really tiny amount of data. And then, if I remember this correct, it would basically learn like one trade at a time as it as it went. Does that make any sense? How, how does that differ? Like if you were to throw out the training set for all intents and purposes and just like make a decision one trade at a time and in real time. I, I, I remember being discussed on BNT. I don't really understand because obviously there's a danger of overfitting to existing data. But I remember very specifically that Wave 59 did not use a traditional training set. But even this mechanism, if it works, uh, like every night you could reset it if, uh, because the market conditions change. Uh, what I did, I looked over one year. But one of the things could be that you don't look over a year. You train it with the last 30 trailing days. And every day you, you take the next day, which now exists, and you add it to, to the training. Mm -hmm. that's, that's possible. Eh? Stephen says that what I'm describing is the difference between online trading or online training and uh, batch training. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm out of my element. Okay, Ryan's asking, uh, oh, he we already covered that. So take, Toby wants to know from a, for a more broader uh, fingerprint without overloading data, you might use prior swing points. So like a zigzag, for example, he's suggesting as one of the inputs. Could be, could be, yeah. The MWAP is also a good idea. Uh, the highs of the days is good. Uh, there's plenty of stuff which is still to be explored. Huh? Right. Uh, for me, what is hope having, giving is that adding the neural network, the result improved. Uh, it didn't make it profitable, but the result improved. Right. And it's just uh, adding the good ingredients to come to something which is profitable. Mark's asking, uh, he says the NCOG has different types of neural networks. Did you use any particular one? Uh, yes, the feed forward one. I tried some of the others, but that didn't give a good uh, result. Okay. And Greg wants to know if you've tried recurrent neural networks. No. Okay. All right, that's all the questions on the board. So if anybody has any other questions, they can always go to the thread. And so, Ron, once again, I'd like to thank you for taking the time to put together the PowerPoint and for staying up late to, to do the presentation for everybody. And I'll post the recording sometime tomorrow and, and see you guys on the forum. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, Ron. See you guys. Thank you. Bye.